everybody, today is Friday, the 8th of July, 2022, and the first half of this year is getting off to a good start. S&P has gained 2% for the week, 3% for the month in the second half of the year, and the NASDAQ up 5% month to date. So uh, we're seeing a, a little bit of uh, short covering, which is turning into a little bit more confidence, maybe from some uh, short-term buyers. But the path of least resistance on the daily time frame is still lower. We still have a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. If we see this uh, little peak get taken out, then that will create a higher high with a higher low. So does that mean the market will have turned? I don't think so. We still have a declining 50-day moving average, and we've seen this type of action before where we saw a lower, uh, a higher low and then a higher high. It doesn't mean the market will turn. And in fact, I don't think it is indicative that a bigger trend would uh, emerge out of this, not with a declining 50, 100, 150, 200, etc. day moving average. So uh, if you look at this market on the weekly time frame, that downtrend is a little bit easier to see. And you can see that, you know, it's been coming in these little chunks to the downside with prior support acting as resistance. So going into next week, we still have this market above a rising five-day moving average. So from a shorter term time frame, it's innocent till proven guilty. From a daily time frame, it's guilty till proven innocent. So what does that mean? It means pick your time frame. If you're in an investor, I think that you have to look at this and say, now is not the time to be positioning for the long term in the S&P 500. But if you're a trader like I am, and this is why I'm a trader, because I can make decisions on these shorter term time frames. We saw a gap lower on Monday that uh, was bought up as it got back above that daily volume weighted average price, which of course turned into a week weekly volume weighted average price. We saw the buyers take control. They then made a higher high above the rising five day moving average. I documented as it was turning here uh, on a Tuesday that it was starting to turn flat to higher and we were on alert for upside. That is on Twitter. If you're not following my, me on Twitter, again, if you're just listening to this on YouTube, you're missing out on so much content. It was funny. Someone uh, two weeks or three weeks ago said, I don't do social media. Uh, I only follow you here on YouTube. What do you think YouTube is? <laughs> Anyways, uh, if you are following it on YouTube, by the way, be sure to subscribe, like the channel and all that stuff path of least resistance on the longer term time frame is still down, but we're seeing a rally. So we're cautiously optimistic going into next week. But again, we have to couch it with the bigger trend, which is still clearly lower. The NASDAQ uh, also had a positive constructive week. We have a higher low in here. We have a declining 50 day moving average that we're right at. Now we've been above the declining 50 day moving average before this year. It doesn't mean that it will turn around. I, I tend to look at it more as as long as it's declining, it's more likely to fail than continue higher. So if we see something like this, and then the next uh, downtrend comes, and then what we would have is maybe then the 50-day moving average would have the opportunity to start to flatten out. This is where we were about 50 days ago. So it's not going to happen right away that that 50-day moving average will flatten out. But it's starting to make a you know, showing encouraging signs that maybe one day we'll point to it and say, hey, that was the bottom. But I'm not here to call bottoms. I'm here to trade and make money trading. We saw that the buyers regained control of the trend in the NASDAQ as it got back above the volume weighted average price from the prior swing high and the swing low right there together along with the five day moving average and it took out that resistance. So buyers are in control here. Short term, it's a little bit extended as it got back above this little prior peak right here. So, you know, next week, I think in all of these markets, if, if we start to pull back a little bit, look for two things. That is the five-day moving average and the volume-weighted average price off that prior peak as far as potential areas where the buyers may emerge and show that it offers support. And then perhaps we could see a continuation higher. If instead it you know drops down and then just fails, well, then that answers our question for us. And we don't want to buy dips. We want to buy strength after a dip with a stop, let's say, right under here. That way, if it fails, well, then we don't lose big money. We take small losses. That's, what, that's called trading. And again, that's why I'm a trader. The Russell 2000, also constructive here this week. We saw, again, and here's the... Uh, you know, this is what I post on Twitter uh, pretty much every day, a chart that looks like this. The 
it, which has that code, which is that this is the five day moving average. And of course, I never look at the five day moving average on a daily time frame, only on intraday time frames. I explain that all the time on Twitter. Um, so, you know, again, we saw the buyers take control as it got back above the volume weighted average price from the prior peak and the five day moving average as that flattened out and turned higher. Now you want to protect your gains in, in the Russell 2000 if you're long with stops underneath today's low. And I think that's kind of the same for all of these markets that we had the shakeout on an event driven, you know, some data that is the jobs data today. So, uh, you know, if it's to break back below that, then, you know, we've got reasons to be cautioned. Semiconductors are still in a primary downtrend on that weekly time frame. Uh, here we can see it clearly on a daily time frame. We're up to the declining 20 day moving average. The 20 day moving average really hasn't been very important for the semiconductors. Now, I always have the 20 and the 50 day moving average on my daily charts, and a lot of times it's important. But for the semiconductors, you can see it, it really hasn't offered a lot of value in terms of support or resistance. I guess it was a little bit of resistance maybe over there, but overall it really hasn't been that helpful. We do still have a declining 50-day moving average as well. So on the daily time frame, we have a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. We rallied, you know, a lot of people will say, well, we rallied on lighter volume and I'll say only price pays that, uh, you know, accept it for what it is. It's a, uh, to rally within a downtrend until proven otherwise. Short term, we're rallying here. Longer term, we're in a downtrend. Trend. If that's too confusing for you, the message of the market is then to sit on the sidelines and not, you know, if, if, if it doesn't make sense to you, then don't try too hard to make sense of it. Trading shouldn't be so difficult. It should be obvious where the trades are and how to manage risk. So semiconductors are still a little bit more vulnerable. The best thing they could do next week is maybe pull back down into this area, find some support, and then start to emerge out of here. So again, find buyers at the volume weighted average price from this low as well as from this peak right here and then perhaps begin to emerge higher and come back up towards that 220 ish level 220 is uh again you know where we've seen some importance before so maybe that becomes the next upside area of resistance of of of, uh, of uh, interest that has the potential to become resistance. So we never know what resistance is. We know that there's a level of interest up here that if it gets up towards there and starts to find that it's having a hard time continuing to move higher and then it backs away from it, well, if that area of, uh, of interest offers enough supply to become resistance, we'll know as it backs away. Until then, it's just a level of interest on the upside that has the potential to become resistance. The financial stocks are a mess. They're still, you know, when you look at, and I say that because on the intraday time frame here, this is a 30, 15 minute, we can look at the 30 minute time frame. Um, and you can see it's just a, a bigger mess in here, a lot choppier than the other markets. I really don't see a big advantage to being involved in here. We've got this level that's kind of been important and that's just, you know, this level in here. So I think you're just best off leaving those guys alone. And energy names, they may have seen the low of this uh, pullback as it came down all the way to the 200 day moving average. And as you know, I've been saying for the last several months, protect your gains in there. Hopefully, uh, you know, no one wrote it all the way down here or, you know, worst case, uh, you know, the dumbest thing to do is to set your stop underneath here. Uh, because we often see in these oversold markets, when they get that first bounce, they undercut the prior low come down to an important level like this and then reverse higher. So I think that the energy names probably will set up for a bigger bounce simply because we still have a rising 200-day moving average. And when you look at the weekly chart, this was a heck of a pullback in there. Um, so I think this is an area I'll, I'll most likely be looking for stocks for uh, subscribers to Alpha Trends to talk about next week. Um, other than that, I guess I'm going to wrap it up right here. Hope you had a good week of trading. There were certainly, let's talk about actually this, CELH. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about this one on Alpha Trends. We got involved right here on uh, uh, Tuesday. We've got one third left. If you follow me on Twitter also, I had pointed out on Tuesday, uh, this uh, PRVA before it moved right over here at $29.48. I'd mentioned HRMY in that same tweet at $51.46 right here before it moved. It never ticked lower. Um, EVH, same story, it never ticked lower. 
that one I tweeted about at $31.16 right here, right before it moved. And ALKS in the same exact tweet uh, at $30.47. It never ticked lower from the entry. So hopefully you're following me on Twitter and uh, have a good weekend.